Previously, we've learned about the relationships between torque, speed, current, voltage, power, and efficiency for a DC motor. When we did the previous assignment about this, we found these relationships from data published by a motor manufacturer. Now, sometimes you will need to find or verify this information from an actual motor that you already have, rather than from a data sheet provided for you. One way to do this is using a measuring device called a dynamometer, a device that measures torque and speed of a motor. Today, we'll be learning how to use a dynamometer to accomplish this. I will lead you through this process step by step, and you should do the process with me as we go. First, we'll learn some things about the motor just by using this power supply. Notice that the power supply has two dials, one for voltage and one for current. Now, recall that in a previous motor modeling video, we learned that voltage and current work differently. Voltage is pushed and current is pulled. First, make sure that the power supply cable isn't attached to anything. It is just laying free here. And the power supply should be off. Turn the current dial all the way up like this. That will allow the motor to pull as much current as it wants from the power supply. And turn the voltage dial all the way down like this. That will make it so that no voltage at all is being pushed out of the power supply. Now, turn the power supply on and make sure that both the voltage readout and the current readout say zero. If they do, now turn the power supply back off. Take the motor that is lying freely on the table and we will mount the motor in the dynamometer like this. First, make sure that this screw is loosened all the way. Then, take the motor and slide it in, and it should be pretty tight. Don't slide it in so far that the pulley hits the dynamometer, but get it in nice and tight. It should look like this. You'll have to wiggle it a bit to get it in. Now, tighten the screw down like this. It doesn't need to be too tight, just get it finger tight. We won't attach the shaft of the motor to anything because the first thing we want to do is find out some things about the motor in its free running state. That is, when nothing is attached to the shaft. Now, plug in the two banana plugs to the power supply like this. Make sure that the red cord goes into the red plug and the black cord goes into the black plug. Turn the power supply on. Your motor shouldn't be turning at all because the voltage is all the way to zero. Now, slowly turn the voltage dial up and watch the current reading. See how the current reading is going up, but the motor isn't turning yet? That's because of the internal friction in the motor. The motor is pulling more and more current to try to generate enough torque to overcome the static friction. When you get to about one volt, the motor still shouldn't be turning yet. Stop increasing the voltage of the motor for a moment and write down the current output that you read at one volt. This amount of current will be the stall current at this voltage because the motor right now is pulling as much current as it possibly can to try to overcome the friction. Remember that stall current is the amount of current that the motor pulls when it is stalled. That is, there's so much torque on the shaft of the motor that the motor cannot overcome it and start to turn. Right now, at this low voltage, that amount of torque is provided entirely by the friction inside the motor. Now, we have a relationship between voltage and current. Now, we know that in a DC motor, V equals IR minus omega times KV. 
Omega here is the rotational speed of the motor. Right now, the motor isn't moving at all, so omega is zero, and we're simply left with V equals IR. So this will allow us to figure out the amount of electrical resistance that the motor has, and that is going to be useful to us in the near future. Okay, now keep increasing the voltage until you get to six volts. You will notice that as soon as the motor overcomes its internal friction and starts to spin, the amount of current will drop suddenly. That's because the friction is now not static friction, but it is dynamic friction. And dynamic friction is much less than static friction. So the amount of current that the motor needs to pull to overcome the dynamic friction is much less. Now, once you get the voltage up to 6 volts, we're going to take some readings from the motor. We want to draw the torque speed curve for the motor at 6 volts. So write down the current reading from the power supply here while the motor is spinning freely at 6 volts. This is our free running current. Knowing the free running current is useful because of these three equations that we already know. We know that I range is equal to I stall minus I free running. That is, the current range is equal to the stall current minus the free running current. Secondly, the motor constant called the torque constant is equal to the stall torque divided by the current range. And thirdly, the torque at any given current is equal to the torque constant times the current at that torque minus the free running current. These three equations are going to allow us to draw the torque speed curve. And right now, we know the free running current. Okay, now turn the voltage all the way down to zero and turn off the power supply. Now, we'll attach the motor to the dynamometer like this. We need to use this belt to attach the pulley of the motor to the pulley of the dynamometer. The way we do this is first we need to loosen the motor and allow it to slide back and forth. Use this hex key or allen key to loosen the two screws underneath the motor like this. That will allow you to slide the motor left and right. Slide the motor slightly to the right, and that will allow you to position the belt over the pulley of the motor and over the pulley of the dynamometer. Then, hold the motor back to the left with your hand while you tighten the two screws down again. You want the belt to be slightly tight between the two pulleys, but not extremely tight. You also want the belt to be kind of straight. If you look through the acrylic shield next to the belt, it will help you get the belt aligned somewhat. If you have this right, it should be that when you turn the pulley, either of the dynamometer or of the motor, both pulleys turn because of the belt. We want to do a test to figure out some relationships between torque and current. If the dynamometer program isn't open, open it by double clicking on the Mini Pro Dyno link on the desktop. In the upper left hand corner of the screen, there are two buttons called Connect and Disconnect. If Connect is able to be clicked, not grayed out, click on Connect to connect to the dynamometer. Turn on the power supply, then start the test running like this. Now, slowly turn up the voltage all the way to 6 volts. Let it run for about 3 seconds and then click Stop Test. Turn the voltage back down to 0. Now, let's look at our plot.
the x-axis here is time in seconds, and we have three different quantities plotted along the y-axis. The blue line is the speed of the motor in RPM. The red line is the current in amps, and the green line is voltage in units of volts. You can read specific points off of this plot by hovering your mouse over one of these three lines. The voltage we already know from our power supply, but let's read off one value from RPM and one from current. Hover your mouse over the blue line at a point after the motor has stopped increasing its speed. This is known as the steady state of the motor. Read the motor velocity that shows up. Then, do the same thing for current. Some point when the current has come to a steady point near the end of your test, read a value from current. Then, we'll take a look back at our equations and see where we are. Here are the four equations that we're working with. We already found the free running current, so I can plug that in here. We also found one relationship between voltage and current when the speed is zero so we can find the motor resistance like this. Since we now have another relationship between voltage and current at a speed that is not zero, we can plug these values in to solve for kV. But we still don't have enough here to solve for kT, the motor torque constant. We're going to have to do one more experiment with the motor. This time, turn the voltage up to 6 volts before we start the test. Let the motor get up to speed. And then click to start test number 2 like this. Let the test run for a couple of seconds and then stop the test. Let's take a look at the data we collected. Here in the chart, down at the bottom, we can adjust the check marks to show only test 2. Put in the checks in each of these boxes in test number 2 and remove the check marks from test number 1. When you look at the plot, you should have three short straight lines like this. In test number 2, we only captured the steady state of the motor. Now, at the top of the screen, find the button called Summary and click it. This shows us a summary of what we captured in this test. Go down to test number two and look at the max torque. Since we only captured one particular operating value in test number two, the max torque is telling us the amount of torque that we had at a particular speed. Write down these numbers and we'll use them in our equations. Also write down the max current value. Fill in the torque and current values that we just wrote down here in this equation. This will allow you to solve for kT, the torque constant. Now we still haven't found the stall current or the stall torque, but we now have enough information to find that out from the last equation. Plug in 6 volts for V, plug in what we previously solved for R, and then put in 0 for omega, and we can solve for I, the stall current. That is the amount of current when the speed is 0. Finally, we can plug in the value that we just found for stall current into the first equation to allow us to solve for the current range and we can plug in the current range and kT into equation 2 and solve for the stall torque. So how do we take all of this stuff that we have now and assemble a torque speed curve? Normally, we draw a torque speed curve between two points, the stall torque and the free running speed. We've figured out the stall torque, but we haven't figured out the free running speed. It turns out that that's okay. Since the torque speed curve is a line, we only need two points, any two points on the line, in order to draw the line. And we already have captured a second point for our line. From our test number two, we wrote down one combination of speed and torque. We can use that point as the second point on this line. 
And now you have all of the information you need in order to finish the assignment for today. The last thing you need to do before leaving this lab station is leave the station in the same state that you started with. So remove the belt from the two pulleys of the dynamometer and the motor. Remove the motor from the dynamometer so that it's laying on the table. Make sure that the power supply is turned off and also unplug the two banana plugs from the power supply. Finally, delete your test information by clicking on the Delete Test drop-down list and delete the test for Test Run 1 and also for Test Run 2.